I am Thomas Dady. Uh, I currently work in Google, uh, and I have this uh, gravity encoder that we've been working on a while. So I'll, uh, I, last year I gave a five minute lightning talk where I basically said this would be a cool idea to do it. And so now we've got a year to write, to write it. Um, which, which a lot of it's been kind of the way I'm in finishing AB1 too, but I'll show you where we are. Um, so if you haven't heard of gravity, it's basically a new experimental AB1 encoder. Um, with basically a bunch of goals. Uh, there's uh, actually a big roadmap on the wiki if you want to look. But uh, the main goal is that we want to be faster than LibAOM for obvious reasons. Um, we also like to get better quality than LibAOM. Um, we think there's a lot of stuff that we can do to squeeze out more uh, quality with the existing bitstream format. And ideally, we'd like to do both of these at the same time, which is going to be the most exciting part. Um, but basically, uh, since the last lightning talk, we're basically said this would be a good idea. We've gotten a lot better. Um, if you look at our very latest runs, uh, if you compare it to X264, very slow. It's a little bit, but, uh, the bitstream that Ravi produces is 15 to 30% smaller than X264 for the same quality. Um, so it's already becoming a viable X264 placement if you want the X264 best speeds. Um, for LibAOM, it's a lot worse. It's like 70% bigger than LibAOM, so we still got a ways to go to get you know the, the, the all that quality out of it. Um, but we're starting to get the speed down, at least. Um, so anyway, um, <coughs> kind of the background on LibAOM and why we are writing Ravi rather than just making LibAOM better. Um, uh, one of the problems with LibAOM is it's derived from the VPX code base, so it has a lot of VPX legacy code in it. Um, uh, the reference implementation is a bit different in that it is usable, right? I, I've, I've made a bunch of uh, 1080p encodes for the IBC demo last week with LibAOM. And you can do it, um, and I think uh, like all the YouTube deployments and stuff right now are using the VOM. Um, but it's uh, very slow. Uh, it's hard to work on because a lot of the decoder behavior or encoder behavior is derived from the old VPX codecs, and AB1 has changed a lot since those codecs. So it does a lot of things uh, that we don't have to do. Um, for example, it does uh, multiple passes through the frame, and it does, it does uh, uh, an approximation for the costs of each symbol. Um, but we, oh, with the way that uh, Ravi works, it doesn't, or it doesn't need, or in fact, the AV1 bitstream is, uh, the AV1 bitstream updates its costs on a per symbol basis, and so we use the exact symbol cost rather than approximation, for example. Um, it also has, a, everyone likes to complain about the rate control. Um, it's it's a very, very uh, complex rate control with a lot of heuristics that have been accumulated over time, and we kind of wanted to just start fresh and try to do something new, so. That also. Um, the other thing, uh, so when I say we want to get faster, I don't know if you saw Jan Ozer's article recently on AB1 and Street Media. He posted this encoding time chart. As you can see, there's a standout on there. Um, so we need to solve that somehow. Uh, the, uh, one thing we could do is we could, we could write lots of SIMD. Um, the bad news is that uh, SIMD can get us like eight times faster, but as you can see, eight times faster on a chart is not really there. Um, you know, maybe with Intel comes out with like ABX 8192, um, down the clock to 10 megahertz or something. But, you know, until we get that, we have to figure out some other way to fat, speed up gravity. Um, so the general plan is for this is we have like a, a big list of uh, features that we're doing. Um, um, I'm just going to hit a bunch of, of random stuff. It'll be kind of like the more experimental, weird things that Ravi does. Um, and that may or may not work. Some of them are written, some are not. Um, anyway, uh, the list of things is uh, 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 basically we have this accurate RDO. Um, we also uh, are able to apply the loop filters during RDO. This is actually very similar to what David does. Um, uh, they're kind of independently implemented, but we both came up with the same idea, which is good. Um, alternative distortion metrics. Uh, this is what X264 calls PsiRD. Um, rate control techniques like MBTree, um, that's also uh, from X264 in terms of that, uh, is very similar. Like that, that can be ported to almost any codec. <laughs> and some other methods of uh, speed improvement that we want to do, including alternative parallelization methods versus just your, your boring little pile of threading. Um, so basically, uh, I want to describe a little bit because uh, the terminology here. Um, what is RDO? So RDO is how you make it an encoder. Um, so that, that it was a very simple process if you want to write a pretty basic video encoder. You uh, 
uh, basically have this loop where you try a bunch of stuff. So you will, you'll uh, encode a, a little block of your video with, with a certain rate, and a cert, uh, uh, it'll cost so many bits, and you'll measure the distortion, aka the quality, um, then you'll take that rate and distortion and you'll compute an overall RDO score. Um, basically you want you know, less distortion and less rate, um, and so there's some trade-off there, and then you'll try to get until your video is good. Um, so you can just try any possible way to compute, uh, like encode an 81 video, and eventually arrive at the best one. Um, that's that's what LibAON does, um, with, with a lot of uh, shortcuts even. But that's how you get that enormous runtime. Um, so in Ravi, uh, actually the RDO happens uh, on a per super block basis. We have these big uh, super blocks, either 64 by 64, 120 by 128. Um, we process them in, in just the, the bitstream order, which is like this. Um, the special thing that Ravi does is it uh, actually, once it's done with the super block, it finalizes it and it like, never touches it again. So we write out the bitstream there, um, uh, and we're actually, you know, go, going, going through the, the output block, and once we're done there, we never go back and read those pixels again, which is a lot better for cache behavior. It means that like, we have this super hot in-memory block, and once we're done, that, done with it, we're entirely done. Um, and compared to like LibAO, which we'll write out, it actually does a full pass to the frame, writes all its decisions, and does a second pass. Um, another cool thing we can do this is we can do the filter in mining. So I have a kind of hard to read example here. Um, uh, so I have those same uh, pink blocks, uh, but we also uh, have to do uh, post filters. Um, AB1 has three post filters. It's, uh, it's uh, getting more and more popular. I uh, guess, uh, uh, but uh, we actually, uh, we apply them as we're doing this in code. Um, the downside is that they've, a lot of them impair the, the very first of the three filters, spans blocks, it's the blocking filter. Um, so what we do is we actually, as we encode the block, we'll encode a whole row, and as we're encoding them, you'll see the vertical blue stripes kind of indicate where we're blending pixels together along the vertical boundary. We do those, uh, once we pick up, finish a block, we blur the one previous. And then once we get to the second row, and we finish the second row, then we can first do that uh, green horizontal line. Um, but in, by doing this, you know, we again have the, the, those pixels are hotter in cache. Um, and we can also do some other interesting things, not only have this computed much earlier than we otherwise would. Like if we had just computed all this, the, the, the blocking filter way at the end of the frame. Um, uh, one thing we can do here is we can do some cool techniques with uh, putting the filter in the RDO loop. Um, for example, I have this kind of this picture on the left. The uh, uh, left is like an X264 style encoder, uh, where you we do this this, this search. Uh, you do these like you know four steps of the video encoder, and you just do it over and over again with the different modes, and you find the one that gives you the best score. And then you apply the blocking filter on it. Um, but you you searched all those modes without actually knowing what the blocking filter would be. You just kind of hoped that the blocking filter didn't affect it enough to change your decision. Um, but we do have the opportunity, actually, now if we run the, these filters in series, you know, as we're going through the blocks, we actually know what the effect would be, and we can include that in the loop. Um, so you can see we, we would actually do all of those steps. Um, and this actually would make the encoder slower, which is kind of not the direction we want to be going. Um, but it would it, give us some quality. Maybe we can uh, make some other things faster and then do this and trade out, make some better trade-offs than the video would do, for example. Um, Another thing we do in this distortion matrix, we have measured rate, rate isn't bits, it's kind of non-negotiable. Um, distortion is though, uh, the, the simplest implementations of RDO like are used in uh, LibAOM, for example, will basically use MSC as a distortion metric, uh, and they just try to maximize PSNR, make a cool looking number. Uh, but it turns out uh, there's a thing you can just swap a distortion metric with anything else, uh, and you can make your video look better. For example, if you want to make your video have a better VMAP score, you can make you can basically invent a, like a little VMAP like metric um, that are, operates on each block, and says, you know, you, you can use loop through the blocks, and you'll pick uh, a combination that maximizes a VMAP score, or you can maximize pretty much anything else. Uh, some of the challenges here is that you have to VMAP runs on a whole image, and VMAP does multiple frames, so you can't actually run VMAP itself. You have to come up with some simplification that you can use in this uh, in the coder. Um, this is called X64 calls this in this uh, It's a, a little bit. Uh, X264 has a, a particular metric it uses that's actually tunable. It has like a string parameter, um, but there are many other options. Um, we could just use X264s, but one other thing is that we actually, uh, because our encoder is otherwise more complex, we can actually afford a little bit fancier of a, a distortion metric than X264 did when we implemented it. 
Um, uh, so yeah, it has a metric in it out already called CDEPDIST. Um, this runs on 8-byte blocks. It's designed to tune a, a metric that we have called PSR HPSM. Um, it's not really working the best right now, uh, but it needs a lot of tuning work. If, you're, if you want to do something easy on Rappi that doesn't involve coding, you can just go try it out and run this metric and play with the numbers and see if you can get a video that looks better. And we'll take your patch to play with the numbers and make it look good. Uh, the, uh, the problem with these, all these metrics is they're tuning for visual quality, and so uh, machines can only do so much to tell you how good the video is. Eventually, you have to go tune the numbers yourself with real eyes. Uh, what else do we have? We have virtual control techniques. Uh, so in AV1, you control uh, video allocation in a frame using segments. So uh, this is a concept that's not really in HSD4, but you basically have a, each block has a segment ID, and that segment ID can have very different various things attached to it, like a quantizer. Um, one thing that AV1 Spitstream got is uh, the ability to code this way cheaper. Um, uh, for VP9, you would always predict the quantizer from a previous frame. Um, that worked okay for some uses, uh, but there's some other uses that you actually want to predict it spatially instead. Um, one of these is the MV tree feature in X264, where you actually uh, will have one region of video that you want at higher quality because it's uh, referenced many more times in the future frame. <coughs> and one that you want lower quality because it gets like destroyed in the next frame. Um, so for that, we actually add this AV1 uh, uh, spatial segmentation prediction feature, and we're hoping to take in some advantage of that with this new encoder. Um, like being able to choose to quantize an RDO. This is one other thing that uh, if you pick a non trivial distortion metric, then uh, the correctest quantizer to use to maximize your score is no longer, with MSC, it's, it's uh, just a flat quantizer, but with uh, in fancy distortion metrics, it's no longer one, so you can actually search that. And again, the, the, as I mentioned, a temporal RDO. Um, there's also a bunch of stuff we want to do for speed. Um, we have uh, in progress this basically iterative search states printing. It's, it's actually like not that new. We're just applying it to, to a new codec. Um, the idea is that we do a very cheap mode search. Um, we, we throw away modes that we, we, we just have some super gross approximation. Uh, we pick the best <laughs> modes in that or the best ways to code the block. We do something more expensive, and we do something even more expensive. So this is a way we can, for example, when I said earlier that the, uh, including the post filters in the RDO search was going to improve, you know, make it much more expensive. But maybe we can filter out so many stuff before we get to that point and only do that at the very last step that we can actually afford to do that extra search and we can sort of squeeze the extra quality out of it. Um, one of the crazier ideas we've had is uh, we've been, uh, I, I, I should also mention as uh, gravity is written in Rust because we were all fun, having lots of fun with that. Uh, it's a bit of a more experimental project. It's been working really well so far. Um, one of the features we have in Rust is we have this uh, uh, built-in parallelism stuff. Uh, there's a work steering library that uh, several of our contributors have been playing with. Um, uh, but it lets you uh, do a little bit finer grain parallelism. It's designed to let you, you know, uh, basically, uh, the work steering method allows you to do less walks between threads and therefore split work more finely than you otherwise would. Because normally you need relatively big tiles. If your tiles are too small, for example, your um, you end up just wait, uh, your threads are waiting on each other, and it doesn't actually help you that much. Um, so we actually have a, a implementation that uses Rayon, which is a library that does this, and it actually uh, considers decisions on sub super block level, um, and it will do it's basically alternative to tile or frame threading, where it actually is uh, doing this on the block level. It has no latency. Um, it's currently doesn't work that well, but there is a patch out there. Uh, so we're trying to see if we can get that to work. It'd be cool if we can. Um, if not, we can always fall back to frame and tile frame. Uh, like, uh, but uh, part, part of this is we want to be able to try these things and figure out if they work or not, because we don't want to implement like another boring decoder. We want an exciting decoder. Or encoder, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, that, that's all I have to talk about Ravi. Uh, I think we're out of time for questions. We have time for three or four questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Is that a microphone? Is it not? I can repeat it. I, okay. uh, 
so it, your idea of putting the loop filter into the audio loop is very interesting. Do you see an impact to compression efficiency by doing that as opposed to doing the loop filter later? Uh, yeah, so the question is, does the uh, putting the doing the loop filter in the loop improve compression efficiency? And the, the theory is yes, it, that's the whole point of it. It shouldn't, in theory, improve compression just because your distortion is more accurate because you're measuring it later in the code stage. Uh, so, because the, the, the distortion that the person sees is they see they see the video after all the loop filters have been applied. So the hope is by uh, including that in our search, we can take advantage of, you know, pick a better mode. Like, for example, we know that if the loop filters the, the loop filters tend to blur images in general, and so maybe we pick a, a, a prediction mode that it looks sharper um, than we otherwise would because we know they're going to get blurred later. Um, so we have yet to see this bears like a lot of fruit, but we'll see. Um, and AV1 does have three loop, uh, uh, loop filters rather than the one of the HSP4, so we may be more advantaged than previous codecs from doing this. Alright, other questions? Um, did you try experimenting with the more exotic features like a uh, restoration loop or uh, the wedge compound? Yeah, so so uh, the loop restoration is, uh, we don't actually have that implemented yet, but it's the part of the, the, those three filters I mentioned earlier, the, the, the blocking filter, um, the uh, uh, CCDF and the loop restoration. And so the idea is to, we have, we currently have the, the blocking and CF you know, implement those are in the order. The idea is to have all three running and will be a, a search on a per block basis, we search all three already. And then ideally, we'll be searching the RDO things all those apply. Um, the, the, the nice thing with uh, loop restoration and uh, CDF is they actually don't, they don't write pixels outside of the block, whereas the, the uh, uh, the blocking filter does, so that's actually the hardest part. Uh, the other two are quite a bit easier to implement. Um, as far as like wedge modes and stuff, uh, currently the partitioning modes of it are really simple. It only supports the quad tree partitions. Um, so those are a very, we don't even have the rectangular partitions yet. So they're, they're probably our, our first list. Um, but we do, have, we do want to use all those modes. Um, but I don't have a particular plan for those yet. Ideas of all of course. Sure. Uh, our timeline is we want our MVPs by the end of the year. Um, uh, it's supposed to be, uh, I think, I shouldn't remember what the, the, the eventual goal is. Goals. I'm just trying to make it as good as I possible can. Uh, but I think the idea is that we, we want to be comparable to X264 at the same speed. Um, so like we want to use the same CPU and, and do better than X264 um, at the very slow X264 levels. Um, not. We're not really concentrated on like these fast X64 levels right now. Um, we do actually have a version of Ravi that runs at like, we've gotten it up to uh, 40p in code at 30 FPS real time. We did then what IBC, it, it doesn't give you very good compression, but it is usable. <laughs> um, I see what I Any other questions? Uh, Smarter than back. What are you changing the name? Oh yeah, uh, the name is stupid. Uh, 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 suggestions welcome, um, or mascot, or whatever you want. Uh, if you have a cooler name for it, if you, if you think it needs more phones, let me know. Um, <laughs> Patch is welcome. Why don't you name it Ravioli? Uh, so, so, so I think I, Ravioli seems to be a really popular name, so if you all want to vote for Ravioli, we can totally change it. <laughs> right. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.